He was a man of only five foot six and also known as the last Tsar. Today, we'll be looking into the life of Emperor Nicholas II of Russia. Born on May 18, 1886 in the Alexander Palace, Nicholas Alexandrovich Romanov was the first child of the then Tsarevich Alexander and his wife Maria Fyodorovna. His father, the later Alexander III, was the son of Tsar Alexander II who was assassinated on March 13, 1881. His mother was the Danish-born princess Dagmar, daughter of King Christian IX. Following the assassination of his grandfather, Alexander II, Nicholas became the next Tsarevich. Although he was now heir apparent, Nicholas was badly prepared by his father to be the next Tsar of Russia. Alexander III, then in his 40s, assumed to live for the next 20 to 30 years. The then finance minister, Sergei Vide, realized that Nicholas is not getting well prepared for his future role as Tsar and suggested to Alexander III that Nicholas should be appointed to the Siberian Railway Committee. Alexander III was convinced that Nicholas is not mature enough for this responsibility and even once stated, Nicky is a good boy, but he is a poet's soul. God help him. Sergei Vide once again tried to make Alexander III aware of the problem, stated, if Nicholas was not introduced to the state affairs, he would never be ready to understand them. On November 1, 1894, Tsar Alexander III died at the age of only 49 of a kidney disease and Nicholas ascended the throne as Tsar Nicholas II. Nicholas married Alex of Hesse, a granddaughter of Queen Victoria. At first, the then Tsar and Tsarina were not amazed by Nicholas's bride choice, but gave their blessing since they saw the Tsar's health deteriorating. Nicholas first met Alex at the wedding of her sister Elizabeth to his uncle Grand Duke Sergei Alexandrovich in St. Petersburg. They then met again five years later when Alex visited in St. Petersburg and they fell further in love with each other. Nicholas proposed to Alex in April 1894 at the wedding of Alex's brother Ernest Louis, Grand Duke of Hesse, but she rejected since she did not want to convert to orthodoxy. Upon the news, her cousin and Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany informed Alex that she had a duty to marry Nicholas and to convert just like her sister did years earlier. Nicholas and Alex officially became engaged on April 20th, 1894. The wedding was actually planned for spring 1895, but it was moved forward on Nicholas's insistence. Nicholas and Alex were married on November 26th, 1894, a few minutes before 1 in the afternoon and Alex took on the Russian name, Alexandra Fyodorovna. Nicholas and Alexandra went on to have five children. Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia and Alexei. When Alexei was born, Nicholas finally had an heir, but the joy was overshadowed since Alexei had hemophilia. Hemophilia was a common disease in Queen Victoria's bloodline. Alexandra blamed Alexei's disease on her since she passed it on to him. They decided to keep the disease a secret since they did not want the people to look at the Tsarevich as weak. At first, Alexandra turned to doctors to treat Alexei, but when their treatments all failed, she started to turn to holy men. The most famous of them all was Grigory Rasputin. He was the only one who made Alexei's bleeding stop and it was because of this that Alexandra became dependent on him. Rasputin was deeply hated by the people of Russia and he was one of the many reasons that the Tsar and Tsarina further got deeply unpopular. The downfall already began when Nicholas and Alexander were crowned Tsar and Tsarina of Russia on May 26, 1896 in the Aspensky Cathedral. In the celebration for the coronation the following day, free food and beer were given away to the people of Moscow. As rumors started to spread that there won't be enough for everybody, the crowd started to rush to the stands. As a result, 1,389 people of the estimated 1,000 visitors that day were tramped to death. This tragedy was seen as ill omen for Nicholas the Star's Tsar, and what made it even worse was that that night the gala event for the French ambassador was held. Nicholas wanted to stay in his chambers and pray for the lives lost, but was talked into attending by his uncles. As a result, the people of Russia saw Nicholas as frivolous and uncaring. So how did Nicholas grow further unpopular? It all started with a war between Russia and Japan, which was almost unavoidable by the turn of the 20th century. Russia, as well as Japan, had plans to further expand. 
The war began in February 1904 with a preemptive Japanese attack on the Russian fleet in Port Arthur prior to a formal declaration of war. The Russian Far East fleet got trapped in Port Arthur and the only other Russian fleet was the Baltic fleet. Although it was almost half a world away, the decision was made that it should be sent to the east. The Baltic fleet was nearly annihilated by the Japanese in the Battle of Tsushima Strait on its way to clear the blockade on Port Arthur. In addition to the problems on sea, the Russian army faced difficulties transporting troops and supplies to Port Arthur. After nine months of resistance, Port Arthur fell to the Japanese. In addition to that, on Sunday, January 9, 1905, prison labor leader Gregory Gapon and unarmed workers peacefully marched through the streets towards the Winter Palace to deliver a petition to Tsar Nicholas, calling for reforms such as limitations on state officials' power, improvements to the working conditions and hours, and the introduction of a national parliament. The march was found a way blocked by lines of infantry as the soldiers opened the fire on the crowd. 92 people were killed that day and hundreds wounded. This day is also known as Bloody Sunday. Still fighting in the Russo-Japanese war and facing imminent defeat, the call for peace throughout Russia grew. His cousin, Emperor Wilhelm II, urged Nicholas to negotiate for peace, but Nicholas remained evasive. It was not until May 1905 and the annihilation of the Russian fleet by the Japanese that Nicholas finally decided to sue for peace. The war was ended by signing the Treaty of Portsmouth. Spurred by the catastrophic lead in the Russo-Japanese War, the First Russian Revolution broke out. The Russian Revolution of 1905 was a wave of mass political and social unrest that spread through vast areas of the Russian Empire. It led to the constitutional reform, namely the October Manifesto, including the establishment of the State Duma, the Muli party system, and the Russian constitution of 1906. After a few attempts to sue for peace, Russia entered World War I on July 28, 1914. The outbreak of war found Russia deeply unprepared. While Russia had great success against the Austro-Hungarian and Ottoman army, they failed to succeed against the mighty German army. In September 1915, Nicholas assumed the role of commander-in-chief after dismissing his cousin, Grand Duke Nicholas Nikolaevich. This was a mistake as the Tsar came to be personally associated with the continuing losses at the front. Since he was away at the headquarters at Mogilev, he was far from the direct governance of the empire, and when revolution broke out in Petrograd, he was unable to halt it. The Duma was still calling for political reforms as unrest continued throughout the war. Cut off from public opinion, Nicholas could not see that his dynasty was tottering. With Nicholas at the front, domestic issues and the control of the capital were left with his wife Alexandra. However, Alexandra's relationship with Grigory Rasputin and her German background further discredited the dynasty's authority. Nicholas had been repeatedly warned about the destructive influence of Rasputin, but had failed to remove him. By early 1917, Russia was on the verge of a total collapse of morale. An estimated 1.7 million Russian soldiers were killed in World War I. The sense of failure and imminent disaster was everywhere. On February 23, 1917, in Petrograd, a combination of very cold weather and food shortages caused people to start breaking into shops. The police started to shoot at the people, which incited riots. The troops in the capital were poorly motivated and their officers had no reason to be loyal to the regime with the bulk of the Tsar's loyalists away fighting in World War I. In contrast, the soldiers in Petrograd were angry, full of revolutionary fervor and sided with the people. The Tsar's cabinet begged Nicholas to return to the capital and offered to resign completely. The Tsar, 500 miles away, misinformed by the Minister of Interior that the situation was under control, ordered that firm steps must be taken against the demonstrators. After all orders broke down, members of the Duma and the Soviet formed a provisional government. They issued a demand that Nicholas must abdicate. On March 15, 1917, Nicholas abdicated in favor of his son Alexei, but changed it a few hours later since Alexei would not live long enough while separated from his parents who would be forced into exile. Nicholas thus abdicated on behalf of his brother, Grand Duke Michael, but Michael declined and so ended the Romanov dynasty. 
The Romanov family was offered exile in the United Kingdom by George V, who happened to be Nicholas's cousin. But George V took back his offer shortly after as advised by his government. On March 20, 1917, the provisional government decided that the royal family should be put under house arrest. They first were under house arrest in the Alexander Palace in Tsarskoye, but after the failure of the Kerensky Offensive, they were moved to Tobolsk. On April 25, 1918, Nicholas, Alexandra and Maria were moved to Yekaterinburg, while Olga, Tatiana and Anastasia stayed with Alexei since he was sick. On April 30, 1918, the first three Romanovs arrived in Yekaterinburg, where they were imprisoned in the Ipatiev House, also known as the House of Special Purpose. The remaining Romanovs arrived on May 23, 1918. Here, the Romanovs were kept under even stricter conditions. With the news of the White Army coming closer to Yekaterinburg, the chief executor Yakov Yurovsky received the execution confirmation from Moscow. The White Army was the armed formation of the anti-communist forces. They fought against the Red Army of the Bolsheviks, the Bolsheviks being the far-left revolutionary Marxist faction founded by Lenin. At around 2 a.m., the family was awoken and taken to the basement. Yurovsky then announced the decision to execute them and opened the fire. Nicholas was the first to die. Olga, Tatiana, Maria and Anastasia were all still alive after the first hail of bullets since they had jewels soon into their clothing. They were then stabbed with bayonets and finally shot at a close range into their heads. The bodies were brought into the near woodlands and burned. After that, they soaked the leftovers into acid and threw them into a mine shaft. Together with the family, their physician Eugene Botkin, a lady in waiting Anna Demidova, footman Alexei Trupp, and head cook Ivan Karitonov were also executed. Nearly 60 years later, in 1979, the bodies of nearly the whole family were found in a mass grave outside of Yekaterinburg. Despite their shocking find, the discoverers kept it a secret as Russia was still ruled by the communists. In 1991, the bodies were exhumed and investigated. Quickly, the scientists found out that two bodies were missing. Most likely, either Anastasia or Maria's body and Alexei's body. On August 23, 2007, the last two bodies were found and confirmed to be the missing members of the Romanov family. In 2000, the Russian Orthodox Church canonized the whole Romanov family as saints. The Russian Orthodox Church abroad had already canonized the family in 1981 as holy martyrs.